Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal bringing you my thoughts, analysis, and rant. I just did that on the LG G7 Thin Q, so check that out. So, let's talk about the most recent announcement from OnePlus. They recently announced OnePlus 6. The biggest takeaway from the announcement is the rising in prices it is now going to cost six hundred dollars not only that there is a notch following the trend which i don't understand i don't like this trend i don't like the copycat designs there is no originality where is the never settle phrase here so let's talk about the specs for a bit okay before i get into that so the most notable specs we have here is Gorilla Glass 5 front and back but there is no wireless charging screen size is 6.28 inch that's 19 by 9 aspect ratio it's still a 1080p resolution but it is AMOLED yes AMOLED instead of LCD uh, Snapdragon 845 6 gigs of RAM if you order the 64 variant, 64 storage, and then 8 gigs of RAM if you order the 128 or 256 storage. So 16 megapixel f1.7 with OIS and the primary back camera. The secondary back camera is only 20 megapixel f1.7. We have a front camera f 2.0 with electronic image stabilization that can shoot up to 1080p android 8.1 oreo the battery is still the same from previous generation 3300 milliamps with dash charging again no wireless charging now we got a uh, connectivity here usb 2.0 type c a headphone jack i don't understand why it still has the usb 2.0 what's wrong with 3.0 or 3.1 for that matter it uses a doodle dual sim lte the colors that will come in is black mirror black midnight black that's absolutely ridiculous silk white and recently announced avengers color edition now we also have base and lock in terms of software, fingerprint sensor, loudspeaker, and portrait mode. And my favorite is it's still keeping the alert slider. So what have we learned based on specs? Well, I mean we have not really learned much except the AMOLED and the better camera other than that here's my thing okay and just so you know the prices will be six hundred dollars and then depending on the bigger storage it could be more but so what do i think of this phone so for one the design is lacking I've seen some YouTube videos saying that our oh, design is great, so and so. I, I'm think I'm looking at them and asking myself, how is the design great? The backs look like the LG G7 or previous Oppo phones, or even Huawei phones. The front, we already know what it looks like. It looks like an Oppo phone. It looks like the G7 phone. It looks like other uh, China phones out there with the notch. Yes, I know you can remove it just by having an artificial black screen up top but still doesn't change the fact that it has a notch sticking with a 1080p i'll give them that excuse but what i don't but I, what i will not give them an excuse is the rise in prices i will get to that later not only that i wish they could have added a ois in the front camera and then they could have added an sd uh, sd card slot but apparently not I'm not sure if the dual sim is dual active sim it should be based on the price and USB 2.0 it should be 3.1 I'm okay with them adding a headphone jack but wish the audio 
or the DAC was much better. I don't have much information on it, but it seems like it's not notable, uh, uh, better. And that's charging, that's always great. So, here is the thing where I don't understand this. Let's go with colors first, okay? You get an option of mirror white, I mean mirror black and midnight black. So the midnight black is matte black and the mirror black is shiny black. And you got the silk white. Why do why is why must there be two two blacks? Why can't you just add a gray variant? Number uh, two. Wireless charging is not included. If you have two Gorilla Glass front and back, why not also add wireless charging? This is the NFC thing all over again. Right? Number three. Where is the image stabilization on the front? There must be. Number four. Why do you still keep using 2.0 speed when your connection is a type C? Why can't you just give it a USB 3.1? I don't understand it. Number five, where is the SD card slot here? I know you wanna provide 128 gig, 256 gig, but at least give one of the slots to the SD card. I mean, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. And then the notch, the notch. It's pretty obvious here that it's using the chassis of the Oppo. Because Oppo and OnePlus are under the same company or under the same umbrella of the brand. But in any case, why do you need to add a notch? Why? Where is the originality? Where is the never settle motto here? Where is that? Obviously, you're settling for the trend. But if I'm not going to settle or never going to settle, then why am I going to buy this phone knowing that there are other phones that are cheaper and looks the same as this? Not only that, they're probably using the same 1080p screen AMOLED, but whichever. Last but not least, you have the price. Price. So there is a rise in price here. And I'm really trying to understand why there's a need to r raise the price here. There's no wireless charging. You only get basically two colors. There's no improvement or major improvement on the camera. There's no major improvement in the resolution of the screen. Not only that, you're using an old connection or a very slow connection. Really 2.0 USB 2.0? Are you kidding me? But somehow or some way, somebody is going to defend this. So, if the G7, I'm going to do a comparison, land on $650, I would rather get the G LG G7 Think Q than this. Would I get the S9 than this? Yes, I would. Obviously, I would get the S9 if it lands on the $700. But to me, the S9 is a better overall smartphone. Overall, okay, that is the word. I'm not gonna get into specifics. Not only that, why is the camera, I mean battery capacity the same? 3300 milliamps. Come on, with that bigger phone, 6.28, 6.28 inches. And you're giving me a 3300 milliamp battery and check this out right so the s9 plus is at 6.2 inch and yet it has a battery of 3500 milliamps so where is this space how why is the space inside the chassis not being efficient here i don't get it i really don't i mean i know that OnePlus doesn't have a uh, budget compared to Samsung. Samsung 
basically has a limited budget but if you are a smaller company I think that you should be efficient with the space you are providing or creating in the OnePlus 6 if your phone is bigger than the competition then I would expect the battery could be bigger not only that is a 1080p and the S9 Plus is pushing a higher resolution it just doesn't make sense so who is this phone for I think that this is for people who like to have a mid-range price I mean yes mid-range price but a smartphone with a flagship specs if you're a cheapskate then yes get this if you love oxygen OS get this but if you are a general consumer this is not a phone for you that's because OnePlus does not market to the carriers so you have to buy this online and so they will be where they at just like when they when the OnePlus 5 and the OnePlus 5T was announced will they grow yes they will grow as more and more people get to know them but they're not gonna push as many numbers compared to G7's, Motorola's, Samsung's, or even Apple. They're not. Not only that, they will always be stagnant with their specs. It's always something that's missing or they're using old specs and yet they're raising up the prices which I don't understand. We're, we're, we're at, at the point where OnePlus just need to stop using the statement or phrase never settle they might as well put settle down as their phrase anyways that concludes my thoughts analysis and rant of the one plus six if you share the same viewpoints as i do let me know down in the comments below if you not if you don't share the same or you absolutely disagree with me let me know down in the comments below but I'm gonna say it again. If you are a fan of OnePlus, get this. If you are thinking about getting the OnePlus, Samsung, G7s, Apple, or even Motorola's, or even Huawei's, I would think that OnePlus would not be your one, your first or second choice. And so that basically concludes this. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.